Dear Mr. Barnes, dear students, and all the guests, and we have here very respectable persons, Ramu Swamiji, and we have Dr. Bhakti Miskam, some scientist from Sri Chaitanya Sarswati Institute, West Bengal, India. And all of you, wish you a very good afternoon. Uh, Chaitanya Swami is going to present a talk, uh, which is entitled, The Scientist is Able to Explain Science. But is science able to explain the scientist? It's a very unique talk, and hope all of you will enjoy it. And before the talk, I would like to give you a short introduction of our Swamiji. Bhakti Nishkam, a PhD graduate in Mechanical Engineering from Utkal University in the year 2000. He did his master's degree from Mechanical Engineering Department of Indian Institute of Technology, Guwahati, on Fluid and Thermal Science in the year 2003. He obtained his PhD on Coastal Hydrodynamics from Ocean Engineering Department of Indian Institute of Technology. Uh, this is Kharang, Kharangpur. In the year 2008, he worked as an invited scientist in Korean Ocean Research and Development Center from May 2007 to May 2008. He has published numerous technical papers in international national journals and conferences. During his PhD, he made his spiritual master, his divine grace, Sri, Sri La Bhakti Swarup. Sri La Bhakti Swarup. Damodara Maharaja, Dr. T. D. Singh, and he thereby became inspired to carry out his future works on the most fundamental topics in science, such as origin of matter in life. Origin of Universe and Consciousness. In the year 2011, he had received the three Dandi, three Dandi Sanyas initiation from Sri Bhakti Nirmal Acharya Maharaja, the dear most disciplined and successor of Sri Chaitanya Sarsot Math. Oh, I think. I missed some. Successor of Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaja, the author is now serving actively in Sri Chaitanya Sarsod Math under the able and expert guidance of his holiness Sri Sripad Bhakti Madhava Puri Maharaja, PhD, to carry forward the vision and directions which he has obtained from his spiritual master, his divine grace, Sri. Bhakti Swarupa, Damodara, Maharaj Dr. T. D. Singh. And uh, before the talk, I would like to say a few words to our dear, respectable Professor Mohan Kharel. Uh, this is my request for you. Definitely a very uh, non conventional type of uh, seminar in which uh, the wisdom is trying to link with the other wisdom. It seems that uh, both of the wisdoms in, uh, are appearing uh, mutually exclusive. You know, if one uh, believes in one thing and another uh, seems to be uh, excluded, but should not, uh, cannot these two disciplines be together uh, to 
link together so that our uh, understanding will be uh, improved, uh, uh, elevated. Uh, so it seems it is said that knowledge is like a rod. Rod has two ends, and when two ends are there, uh, 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 there is a definite necessity of the two ends for the existence of the rod. Similarly, for the existence of the wisdom, there is a definite necessity of the uh, spiritualism and the science. Uh, otherwise, our knowledge may not exist. So, since if it is so, then that is a very fundamental question, I mean, uh, basis for our knowledge. That is why probably um, Albert Einstein, of, uh, uh, a great scientist of the 20th century, uh, said that uh, uh, science without religion is lame and religion without science is blind. So, being a such a, like, I mean, such a scientific uh, person with the, uh, such a big merit of science, still he gave a, such a good uh, uh, recognition to the spiritualism or religion. Therefore, uh, uh, we are being a student of the science, uh, we cannot, uh, we may not uh, ignore it also. Uh, 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 that is why. Uh, another uh, uh, very uh, inescapable, uh, uh, or we should say, kind of uh, uh, compelling uh, situation is that uh, man is not a mortal, and man has to encounter with the diseases as well as. Uh, Old age, as well as death, is Lord Buddha encountered in his lifetime. I mean, is he uh, got uh, inspiration from those sources? So each of us, no matter whether we are scientists or non-scientists, we have to we will bound to be encountered with these kind of situations. So we cannot uh, 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 remain outside of that philosophy. So that uh, is uh, definitely. Mm, a very compelling situation for every one of us. Now, next thing is that uh, as long as we are uh, very much uh, dependent on a materialistic concept, then the, no matter how much we do the development, our thrust for knowledge uh, cannot uh, show in the completeness. Only because of the, only uh, based on the uh, uh, materialistic uh, explanation only. So, Many of the uh, scientists themselves, not only the spiritualists, but many of the scientists like Van uh, uh, Alan of the physics, as, as well as uh, uh, Albert uh, Wallace, uh, the co-partner uh, of the Darwin, but uh, he deviated from the Darwinism. And uh, from that time to descend uh, uh, this quantitative, uh, I mean, uh, uh, quantum physicist as well as uh, several other biologists, particularly molecular biologists even, um, uh, are giving a very good emphasis for the, this abstract uh, uh, basis of the knowledge, particularly this uh, consciousness. How does the consciousness come from? It, does it come from the uh, matter or does it come from some, something else? That is a very big question. And as long as we don't settle it exactly, our science cannot be science. Therefore, uh, a new domain, a new moment of our thinking is necessary. And for that purpose, a uh, very uh, a different, uh, non-conventional type of seminar is organized because of the arrival of uh, uh, our Santa Maharaji, uh, Nishkam Santa Maharaji, and as well as uh, uh, Ramakrishna Maharaji. So, uh, uh, because of the inspiration, we will learn a lot of things and uh, based on that information, uh, probably at least we'll, we should not change our thinking right today, but at least uh, that may give a kind of uh, food for thought, and that uh, food for thought may be a source of uh, energy for us. So it is a great uh, pleasure for us to welcome uh, these two great personalities in our camp, in the premises of the science building. Thank you. for a kind, you know, inspiring words and all the faculty members of this uh, university and all the students. I am very much thankful for this opportunity that you all given 
And before beginning, I would like to uh, offer my humble prayers to my Divine Master so that some auspiciousness may come in this environment and then we can receive some real knowledge. Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chakshurun Militam Jaina Tasme Sri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Sri Mate Bhakti Sarudamadar Swami Tinamini Nama Om Sati Bhakta Mane Manipuri Bhavayacha Prabhupada Shadevani Pracharya Nirtayate Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadadhar Shiva Sati Sri Gauravata Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So we have one website scienceandscientist.org You all can note down scienceandscientist.org In that website we have Darwin under seas one of the sections and also we have a newsletter called the Harmonizer and we often publish papers in that and uh, you know recent research in biology so you all can visit it and you will find very interesting conclusion in peer reviewed journals not just you know statements of scientists but published you know uh, statements not just oral statements so you will find very interesting how evidence is supporting our ancient ideas vedantic ideas so that's what our, you know, Sri Chaitanya Saraswati Institute's objective is to introduce uh, the teachings of Bhagavad Gita and Bhagavatam in a scientific language. We all now understand scientific language. So we think generally those are slokas, those are you know, wisdom that is available in our ancient tradition. These are all merely based on faith and what we are studying in our, you know, day-to-day -day life. This is only science. But all those explanations are all just based on faith. That is not true actually. So that's what our objective is. So we say evolution of bodies versus evolution of consciousness. What Darwin told is how bodies changed. How the body of the is the mic sound is clear? Eco is from the some echo. So if bodies are changing, then from bacteria to human being. Only bodies change offer, but no consciousness changed. Nothing you know about consciousness mentioned in Darwin's evolution theory. That idea is not supported in Bhagavad Gita and all our scriptures. What our scriptures says is that there is soul in the bacteria also, there is soul in the human body also. Isn't it? So if the consciousness of the soul within the body of the bacteria attains the consciousness that of a fish, after quitting the body of bacteria, it will obtain the body of fish. This is known as evolution of consciousness. It is explained in our scriptures. But what Darwin says is that, no, no need of consciousness, no need of soul, only body changes from bacteria to human being. So we are explaining from the evidence, uh, from scientific, you know, empirical evidence, scientific research, how Darwin's idea is challenged based on 21st century conclusions. I met my spiritual master, Srila Bhakti Sarup Damodar Maharaj, Dr. T. D. Singh. Uh, he did his PhD from University of California and he's a very well known scientist. He interviewed many, many Nobel Prize winners and he changed many Nobel Prize winners like Charles Towns, Warner Arbor, William Phillips. So many Nobel Prize winners, they are influenced by him actually. So, you know, Charles Town, he invented laser. Now you use laser, you know, very frequently. But when he met our Guru Maharaj, he, his idea completely changed. And, uh, you know, George Ward in biology, he was a big atheist actually, George Ward, Nobel Prize winner. So our, uh, you know, my present, you know, Siksha Gurudev, who is, who is helping me and uh, who is guiding me after my Guru Maharaj disappearance in 2006, uh, he met him. And he was a big atheist. He was telling life comes from matter, first life came from matter, and by Darwinian evolution everything occurred. 
So when uh, Sripad Bhakti Madhav Puri Maharaj is a quantum chemist, resides in New Jersey uh, and uh, serving director of Bhakti Vedanta Institute for Speech and Culture and Science, he told Professor Ward, why do you think that life comes from matter? Why not opposite? That matter comes from life. You see, you are there, your nail is growing, your hair is growing, even as plant, the soil is not you know, disappearing, but still so much of mass is coming. Do you not see that? So many uh, bio, so much organisms that are producing so much of biomass, don't see that? But we don't have any evidence where opposite is occurring, that matter is producing life, matter is producing one single cell. But why do you think like this? Then he not told anything, and later on he wrote back to his email, mm -hmm. Dr. Marchetti, what you are saying is correct. <laughs> and then he acknowledged all his you know, books, you know, he told what I did previous research all is wrong. And he published peer reviewed journals saying the role of mind in explaining biological you know, organism. Many papers you can read about George Ward, how his life changed and our Guru Maharaj played a vital role. Uh, he influenced him so much. Even the, I was interviewing one uh, you know, atheist, uh, he is the founding director of CCMB, Professor Pushpamitra Bhargava. Uh, he is a well-known you know, scientist, he is a big atheist. When I told about George Wall, oh, don't talk about George Wall. You know, devotees stole him from scientific community. He said like that. Uh, his Nobel Prize should be taken away. You see, like that he was saying. Because so much he changed. And not only he changed uh, on just you know critical platform, but he used science to even prove existence of mind. So we offer prayers to all our spiritual masters to begin some, you know, what you can say, uh, sorry, that is not visible for you all, that title. Uh, I want to show like this, so that you can read the title. Sorry. Um, yeah, but one minute. Uh, so, you can read, sorry Darwin, chemistry never made the transition to biology. So, it is very similar to the title that Madam given you, that uh, scientist can explain science, but the science itself cannot explain scientist. This is what our you know, second international conference that we are organizing at Acharya Nagarjun University. We already organized the first inter international conference at Bhuvaneswar. And uh, this second conference will be held at Andhra Pradesh, one government university. It is a famous university, Acharya Nagarjun University. The conference will be held uh, in November 28 and 29. You all are welcome if you are all PhD students or even master students. If you are good writers, you can you know, submit papers uh, and we will be happy to review it and uh, best papers will be awarded. So please submit your papers. So I am going to discuss in uh, uh, today's, you know, I don't know, it is not showing, sorry. Sir, please don't you know, do that so that in both side operation is not good. So what happens? Uh, this uh, picture you can see on your screen, chemistry is there and biology is there. Uh, there is one arrow, can you see that? So in that it is written, no pathways and Darwin's mistake, no mechanism. So you can read that article I compiled and I presented it in 100 Science Congress. All Indian scientists, they organize every year Science Congress. So they invited me as a you know, guest speaker in their you know, conference that held on its 100th you know, version. So I was speaking this paper in uh, Calcutta, Calcutta University they organized it. So first thing is that from chemistry to biology, when you say a biogenesis, a biogenesis means how chemistry become biology, right? So this is the problem. Darwin told the idea about warm little pond idea, isn't it? There was you know, some warm water and some essential molecules and they come together somehow, the living cell form. So there is no pathway and there is no mechanism. You cannot give any path, how chemistry go to biology. What is the mechanism? We don't have that. So please uh, note down that web address and uh, visit that web address and uh, around 145 peer reviewed journal papers I referred there. And the conclusion of those all papers, I, you know, uh, put in that an article. So famously, you know, some portion is cutting in this. Anyway, uh, Kant, 
Kant famously told, yes, like this. So you can see Kant in a famous philosopher, he told that uh, there will never be a Newton for the blade of grass. There will never be a Newton for the blade of grass. Means Newtonian mechanism will never produce a blade of grass. Actually, my, uh, my Siksha Guru Dev, Sri Bhakti Madhav Puri Maharaj, he was attending one talk in Princeton University. One visiting professor came there and telling, soon we will produce theory of everything. Did you ever heard about theory of everything? Yes? Anybody? Yes, you heard? Some, some, some people. Some people heard. Actually, what is that theory of everything? Theory of everything means there are four fundamental forces in modern science, like gravity, strong force, electromagnetic force, and weak force. These four fundamental forces, if somehow you put it in one single equation, then they call it theory of everything. So he was saying, we will uh, soon produce you know, theory of everything, then we will explain everything. Everything means everything, isn't it? If we exclude something and you say everything, then that is not correct, isn't it? So, uh, our Guru Maharaj, he made a statement, all the science and all the scientists in the world together cannot make a single blade of grass. All the science and all the scientists in the world together cannot make a single blade of grass. You have Please, uh, uh, you note down questions. I will be addressing all the questions, whatever you ask. I will address. So, uh, please note down. I, I request that you forget. Note down all the questions, and I am there. As long as you ask, I will satisfy all your questions. So, uh, you have equation for photosynthesis, isn't it? You use that equation and produce one blade of grass. We are proud of that equation. Please use that equation and produce one blade of grass. Can we do that? No. Our uh, cow is going and eating grass every day, and that simple living entity, that grass is producing so much of grass. But our big laboratories cannot produce one blade of grass. What to talk about one blade of grass? Even there are many living cells on the blade of grass, even they cannot produce one living cell. This is the problem. So, Krishna's laboratory, or Supreme's laboratory can easily produce so much of grass, but our big laboratories and advanced brains cannot produce one blade of grass. This is a acknowledged fact. So, the root of materialism is to teach that life comes from matter. When we teach people that first life came from matter, and from that first life, all life forms manifested. This is the root of all materialism that we you know, find. Actually, many students, they told that they were before believing in God. After teaching evolution theory and evolutionist theory, they become atheists. They become atheists. They say, why? What is the need of God? What is the need of soul? What is the need of consciousness? We have such nice explanation. Everything we can explain based on atoms and molecules. Right? So, to teach that man is simply an enclosed membrane of chemicals affects how people think about themselves. If you teach somebody, you are just chemicals, you are just body. It completely affects how he thinks about the society, how he thinks about himself. In fact, uh, you eat somebody, you kill somebody and you eat it. I eat chemicals. What's your problem? How much you know, degraded thought may come? People are eating you know, uh, babies, human babies, you know that? Many people, many countries, they started eating babies. Why? Oh, they are eating chemicals. What's the problem? Huh? I murdered somebody, I am doing chemical reaction in the laboratory, and I am you know, killing somebody. I am just doing some play with the chemicals. Is this a good explanation? Do you think? I was, I was interviewing uh, one uh, doctor. He is from All India Institute of Medical Science, head of the Department of uh, Laboratory Medicines, Professor A.K. Mukhopadhyay. He said that, uh, I cannot look at my patients with the strict vision of biology. 
I cannot look at them as just chemicals. I cannot. They are not just chemicals. They have subjective experiences, they have feelings, and I cannot apply biology on them. He said me, he acknowledged. You see, your biology is impractical. Can you apply that to your relatives? Can you apply that to your fellow, you know, uh, like fellow men? Can you do that? It is, you know, quite impractical. The way you are teaching people, it is wrong actually. So, this is very important to understand from where materialism is coming in modern science. When you teach people that you are just chemicals, that is, you know, very bad idea. And how it came, these are the three main persons responsible for that, you know, thing to happen in modern education. One is uh, Francis Bacon, another is Descartes, another is Darwin. Actually, it is a little hazy, the text is, because, you know, it is zoomed, but I think you can read it, isn't it? You can read it? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Francis Bacon, he told that we can do anything to get the secret of the nature and useful in our day-to-day -day life, then that is okay, that is scientific. That's what his philosophy, Francis Bacon idea. Utilitarian science came from there. And then Descartes, he told, world is just a clockwork, right? Like a clock is there and all the different, you know, parts of that clock, if you know, if you know the mechanism, you can know the secret of everything, then you can control, you can dominate over nature. And Descartes also told, only human has soul, only human has consciousness, animals don't have consciousness. And this is the idea followed in modern biology also, in modern science also. They introduced the idea of reductionism, uh, trying to understand whole in terms of sum of parts. Trying to understand the whole in terms of sum of parts. This is that biology is like this, right? What you do in biology? You break the whole into small uh, atoms and molecules. Cell is made up of what? DNA, RNA, enzymes, proteins, and so forth and so on. This is what you do. But those all molecules, mm -hmm. they don't have those integrated function that you find in living cell. Isn't it? A DNA by itself cannot replicate. Can a DNA replicate by itself? Outside cell? It cannot do anything. You need a functional cell for those functions that you know DNA is doing. A protein, you can keep it outside. It does not do those functions. Many things, you know, all those biological functions, immune system. You can cut it and produce all these you know, small molecules. Will it have an identity of self and uh, you know, foreigner? You cannot have such identity in molecules. But in a immune system, it has all those you know, systems necessary for it to function as an organic whole. Biological potency is lost. Biological potency is lost when you break the whole into parts. And adding those parts, you cannot get back that biological system. And later on, Darwin came. And Darwin told, even humans don't have consciousness. What to talk about animals? Even humans don't have consciousness. Everything came from atoms and molecules by gradual evolution, right? Survival of the fittest, natural selection, and later on, new Darwinism, you know, random mutation and natural selection. We know that that is the you know, theory. So this is the fundamental basis. But in past, what was the idea? The main reasons people pursued education and attended schools were to satisfy the spiritual quest. This was the idea. When somebody is going to school, he was going for satisfying the spiritual quest. What is that? Athata Brahma Jigyasa. Who am I? Who made this world? What's my relation with him? This type of studies were there in past when they are going to educational system. But what is the main motive of modern educational system? Why you come to the schools and college? To get some bread and butter. Isn't it? The whole goal of modern education is to get some bread and butter. Belly education. This is what is, you know, an animal don't have to do so much of education to get food, biological needs. And you have to do so much of education to get, you know, satisfy your, you know, biological need. Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. This is the only goal of modern education. What is the difference between human and animal? What is the difference between human and animal? This difference is not being taught to you in your schools. What is the difference between, even a big doctor wrote to me in one group, we have a group mail, there are around 15,000 scientists, and he wrote to me, 
Can you explain what is the difference between animal and human? I always have doubt about this thing. Can you explain that? And I'm surprised. And he studies so much of biology, but he cannot understand the simple difference between animal and human being. But if a person studies any of our scripture, he can first understand this thing. What is the difference between animal and human? Man is a rational animal. We said it like that, right? Huh? So the rationality is coming there. Man's rationality is so developed, it not only inquires about its biological need, it inquires about its own identity. And it inquires about who made this world. And in every civilization, every civilization uh, of our you know, human society, if you go, there is some concept of God. There is some concept about spiritual ideas. Why? It is not found in animal civilization, but you find in every human civilization there is some concept of soul and God. In some degree it is there, because that is what its human body is meant for. That is what its human body is meant for. It has some higher inquiry that you will not find in animals. So this is what scripture says. So Darwin's objective evolutionary biology, mechanistic worldview of reductionism is self-defeating in nature. How it is self-defeating? You see what he says, Darwin says, With me the horrid doubt always arise whether the conviction of man's mind which has been developed from the mind of the lower animals are of any values or at all trustworthy. Would anyone trust in the conviction of a monkey's mind if there are any conviction in such a mind? This is what Darwin's statement, not my statement. He was doubting his own theory. If our mind came from monkey's mind, can we trust our mind? <laughs> This is what he is thinking, you see. It is self-defeating in nature. You cannot trust yourself. The whole science is based on our rational power. If you cannot trust your own rational power, then these all theories are useless. Isn't it? That's what Darwin was thinking. And Francis Crick, very famously he told, what he told, our highly developed brains after all, we are not evolved under the pressure of discovering scientific truth, <coughs> but only to enable us to be clever enough to survive and leave descendants. Why our brains are developed? For what purpose? According to Crick? See what he says. To survive and leave descendants. So how can you say you are doing truthfully scientific discoveries? If we apply this theory, why we should trust your theory? If I apply this theory, why we should trust your theory? You are only thinking about survival. Of how I get promotion. <laughs> Truth is not there. Only survival is there in that explanation. How I can get more salary, how can I get more honor? Then truth is not emphasized in those theories. You see? So it is self-defeating in nature. It itself defeats itself if you follow this theory. And without understanding the the philosophical, not in that. There, there. Okay. So, if you follow these theories, then you will find your own, what you can say, scientific theories are not trustworthy. Following this theory, this type of philosophy. And some scientists like Richard Dawkins, they go to the extreme by, you know, becoming devoted themselves to the Darwin's theory and atheistic idea. And he says, that if anybody has a religious mindset, he has a mental virus. You see? If somebody has some faith on religion, then he has a mental virus. And even he, he wrote some books, uh, becoming a devotee of Darwin, that God delusion. And he is happily circulating that in different libraries. And people are becoming, oh, it's a great scientist and he's giving great ideas. But biologists, those who are prominent biologists, they say, that Dawkins, he lives in the world of fantasy. He don't understand biology. That's what they say. They say Piro and many other biologists, they come up with such statement because he does not address biology in reality. He only thinks about clockwork of Descartes. But our organism is not just a clock that you can you know, take out the parts and again reassemble it. Can you do that like a clock? If I give a mechanic a clock, uh, the parts of the clock, and I give him the formula. This is the way you can build one clock. Isn't it? So he can easily build it. But if I tell, I want to build one bacteria, 
Can you do that? Can you build one bacteria in the laboratory? If, you, if I want to construct bacteria, if I want to construct amoeba, if I want to construct one human being, how can I do that? If I want to produce one bacteria, how can I do that? I have to go to bacteria. I have to go to amoeba. If, you want, if I want to produce, I have to go to amoeba. I cannot produce it from those parts that I am studying, I am listing. Oh, cell has this part, that part, that molecule, this molecule. But all those molecules, if you combine, you cannot produce that. Do you understand? So this is the thing that they are not understanding in modern science. So because of that, we see the rivers that are being protected by our civilization. If you go 200 years back, even I see in Kathmandu, the river conditions are so bad, you know. I was surprised this place, you know, such nice place, I heard. But, you know, the rivers, they are not respecting at all. So much of dirty things. Even I, I was in South Korea. Why I get in a project in South Korea, do you know? Actually, there was some power plant, thermal power plant, and uh, they are purifying water before releasing it to the river water. When they release that water, uh, there are some bubbles that are forming, which are gray in color. They have, they have no impurities according to scientific standard. But still, those bubbles are gray in color, and they are floating in the water, and people are agitating. This government is very bad. This government is very bad. We don't want those type of you know, gray bubbles in our river. Then they wrote a mail, because I was working on you know, some research related to that. They wrote a mail, and this is a big problem we are facing. Please come, uh, come and if you can work on this project, it will be useful for us. Then I accepted as a postdoctoral in a scientist there. And you know, we designed some you know, porous structure, how to break those bubbles so that they don't, they don't reproduce. They are so conscious about environment, but we are you know, damaging our environment. Why? Because of this metallistic education. And but this rivers we not created. Did we create this river? Can scientists create one river? Can they create one river? They can only damage it. But cannot create one river. Cannot create one mountain. Oh, put some rocks and create one mountain. Can they, can they do that? No, they cannot do. They can only invent some toys. Some aeroplane, small toy. But big, big, gigantic planets, they are floating in the uh, space for long, long time. Can you not see that? Can you not respect the creator of those all things? So we are not teaching all these things in our education to the students. We are making them only proud. This is false pride. So, discarding outdated teenagers in science. If you see, 515 scientists and engineers signed an anti-evolution petition. And from that, 128 signers hold a degree in biological sciences and 26 in biochemistry. Not only that, you see Nature published, Nature and Science, there are two top journals in, in a modern scientific you know, studies. And Nature reported, that this is in a South Korea, the country's Ministry of Education, Science and Technology announced last month that many South Korean textbook publishers will begin producing revised editions that will for the first time exclude discussions and examples of evolution. They are not, not uh, teaching students about evolution and not teaching about material origin of life. So, uh, Turkey also joined and countries are joining actually. And we have such a uh, great spiritual tradition uh, Nepal and India, they have such a great spiritual tradition and we are behind these countries, they are taking initiatives at the country level. At the country level, they rejected all these things. So, uh, I would like to emphasize also, don't think that you are just biology students, then you have to study life. It is not the truth. This is, this is not the truth. If you Schrodinger, he was not a biologist. Schrodinger was not a biologist, still, he wrote a very nice article about what is life. And in that, he explained uh, negative uh, entropy, negentropy. Life exhibits negative entropy or negentropy. What is that? If you see a rock, if you keep it outside, rock is hot in the daytime and night, again cold. So the cycle continues, hot and cold. But what happens to your body? It is also undergoing some cycle like that. It becomes a little more hot. You say, I have fever. You say that, right? So body is maintaining some temperature. Every organism has the power to maintain temperature. You are there in the body, then body is maintaining order. The moment you die, your body is following entropy principle. 
disorderliness is increasing. So, Schrodinger explained that life exhibits negative entropy. It is not found in outside the biological you know, system. There are now, you know, some scientists saying there are few examples where it exhibits, but life is much more complex. For example, the DNA itself. It's a long chain molecule. And in a polymers, generally we know it does not, you know, it is not produced without a planned experiments. In nature, purely based on physicochemical process, polymers are not produced. You have to have a mechanism and planned experiments. In uh, my friend, uh, he was doing on all these studies, how these polymers are produced and how much, you know, it is complex. These things are very complex in a polymer production. And fossil record is the main evidence that Darwin provided for evolution theory, right? Most of the people say about fossil record, when they want to support evolution theory, they said, oh, there is some transition species and this and that. So many things they talk about, this is related, that is related. You know, there are three major problems in the fossil record. What are that? Stasis, sudden appearance of forms, sudden disappearance of the forms, and I think one more problem is also there, that is absent of transitional species. Stasis means for the long time, over the period of hundreds of millions of years, same species exist actually. If there is evolution, that should be something else. But the same species are all these years that exist in the species. That is known as stasis, is the big problem. And all of a sudden, many biological forms, which is known as Cambrian explosion, they appear all of a sudden. How and why they appear, they don't know. And according to Darwin, if the environment is very bad, species will disappear, right? They cannot survive. In a fruitful environment, in a good environment, many flourishing species disappear all of a sudden. This is another problem. And transition species means uh, developing organs are not found. Means from monkey to human being, from you know one species to another species, there is a big change uh, in terms of uh, different you know, organs. And those changes are not recorded in the fossil record. So this is another problem. Anyway, I am not going to discuss about the dating techniques, how that is creating a big problem. There is one scientist, he did some experiments uh, to prove how all our dating systems are wrong in, in a geology. Even carbon dating, that cannot be applied to evolution theory. You know why? Any idea why carbon dating we cannot apply to evolution theory? Because carbon C12, you know, C14's half-life is actually only 5,700 years, roughly. And if you go with that small half-life, you can only estimate uh, the age up to 50,000 years. But for evolution theory, you need such a long scale. So it is not useful. And many such problems are there in carbon dating because they assume that C12 and C14 ratio is constant throughout the history. It's a blind assumption actually. And uh, there is so much of change due to discovery of atomic, you know, what you can say, tests, and, uh, you know, explosion of industrial, you know, progress, all these things. So this, this you know, carbon dating anyway is not scientific in present scenario. And there is another dating that is known as radioisotope, like uranium, and all this thing. That cannot date directly the bone, but you find a person in the rock which has those radioactive properties. So you are giving date to the rock, not to the organism. Or you find in this layer, one, one person you take and you test it and say, this organism of that age. If I have a dog, that dog died and I bury it in the soil, okay? And it becomes fossil. And then what I want to do, I want to test the soil to find the age of the dog. Is it correct? So there is, there is so many such problems, you know, technical problems they are facing in also stratigraphy itself, the rate of deposition of sediments. You know, that is done by uh, this scientist, Guy Brittle. Uh, he is an engineer, civil engineer, in uh, University of Colorado during his PhD. He conducted this famous experiment, which is known as fundamental experiments in sedimentation. So I have a video, but I don't know whether the sound will come. I want to show you this video of this experiment. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, it is video is there, but I don't know whether it will come properly. So, okay, this guy will explain. Don't worry. I want to show you how how that experiment has created. You see, uh, you see, also screen problem. <laughs> okay. Anyway, can you see this? You know, there is some sediments. You know, what he did, he taken some sediments and uh, different sediments he mixed in the water and he allowed it to flow in a open channel system to see how the deposition occurs. He did it in three different domains, in vacuum, in air, and in uh, still water, and also in moving water. So what he found is that uh, inside the, uh, what you can say, air, it is just intermechanical interaction, it's a mixture. Uh, inside the air also, it is intermechanical interaction. In a still fluid, there is an illusion of layer formation, but it is not exactly layer. But when a moving fluid is there, then he found this pattern. You can see uh, particular particles that are deposited at the bottom, and some particular at the middle, and some at the top. This pattern followed, uh, followed in the downstream. Can you see that growth? What uh, you know, geologists assume is that one layer forms, then other layer forms, and other layer forms, like that. So that's why they say the bottom one is the oldest species. But according to this experiment, all the layers they grow simultaneously. Right? You have a cream biscuit, cream biscuit, two biscuits. In between there is cream. If one biscuit is there, form then cream, then biscuit. Then you can say oh, the bottom one is the oldest one. If the three are growing simultaneously, can you say which one is the older, which one is the uh, younger? Can you say that? So that is what is the problem you know, they faced after this experiment. You can see, there are some you know, species that de they live in different depth in the ocean. Right? When a bulk sediment comes, they bury. All these three species of same age, isn't it? They bury at the same time. You cannot say the bottom one is the oldest one and top one is the youngest one. When next in a layer comes, then another you know, group of species, they are buried. Then, in that case, bottom one is the younger than the top one. So the idea of taking for granted the bottom one is the oldest species is challenged from this experiment. That's what I wanted to say to you. So, now, uh, I already discussed. Now, they did also genetic tree and also uh, tree from the fossil data. So Darwin given the tree, uh, tree of life. You know about that? Tree of life idea? Right? From one species, another species come, from another species, another species come. This is Darwin's tree of life idea. But when they uh, make, uh, try to produce the tree from genetic uh, you know, data, they found it's not tree, it is forest of life. Means there is so much of interlinks. You know, it's like a web, web of life. Not tree of life, it's a web of life. They're all related. Uh, symbiotic relations, you might be knowing, symbiotic relations uh, in the you know, different species, they depend on other mm -hmm. species, they are very closely you know, exchanging information, even in a bacteria, they can you know, transfer their DNA information to other species, to the host, you know, sometimes you know, these parasites, they transform information. So, genetic data does not support Darwin's tree of life, now it is replaced with forest of life or net of life. So after this, you know, Kuhn is a very famous uh, doctor and biologist. He wrote a very you know, famous article in one journal, Dissecting Darwinism. And in that, what he says, several of the textbooks continue to incorrectly promote the debunked miller urey origin of life experiment, the long discredited claims about non-functional appendix and tonsils and the fraudulent embryo drawings from Ernest Haeckel. 
In essence, current biology students, aspiring medical students and future scientists are not being taught the whole story. Rather, evidence suggests that they continue to receive incorrect and incomplete material that exaggerates the effect of random mutation and natural selection to account for DNA, the cell or the transition from species to species. So what he's saying is that textbook is giving wrong information to the students. That's what he's saying. And it is not his own statement, but a published paper. And it is very highly, you know, people are referring this paper. Many such papers, you know, you can find our, you know, website. They're all peer-reviewed journals. They are respected journals, and they are publishing this type of papers. But we are still living in old biology. We are still living in old biology and having so much of faith on old ideas. But this is a revolution that is going on in modern biology. In 2012, this paper published. In 2012. So now I come to you know this point that I must ask you a question. Now, can you discriminate between three systems: mechanical system? chemical system and biological system. Anybody wants to answer? What is the difference between mechanical, chemical and biological system? They are interrelated. What is the difference? No, no, they are, they, we are not talking about difference. They're I am asking, I am asking you, can you explain the difference? The difference is that the biology <coughs> explains the crucial factor about the functional things. And what about physics and chemistry? Physics and uh, chemistry only explains the structural dynamics part. Any other, any other answer? What is the difference between uh, mechanical system, chemical system, and biological system? You see, in your you know, screen you can see there is one mechanical system which is planetary system. Isn't it? And in a mechanical system, different parts, how they are related, what relates those different parts? Different planets, how they are related? What relates them? Gravity. Uh, gravity. Gravity. Correct. So now there is some external force. Some external force which relates different parts in mechanical system. And uh, that force itself, that external force itself does not depend on composition. Does it depend on composition, gravity? It depends on mass. And mass, if you know the mass, you are happy. You can calculate a gravitational force. Isn't it? Mass, distance, all these things. But when you come to a chemical system like sodium chloride, there composition plays a vital role. In mechanical system like a rock, you break the rock, it becomes two rocks. Isn't it? If you separate different parts in a bicycle, it maintains its identity. But in a chemical system, if you break sodium and chloride, they exhibit different property. Isn't it? So the composition plays a vital role and here, the, the connection is chemical bonding. But when you come to biological system also, it is made up of many parts. In a cell, so many things are there. What is connecting all those parts? In mechanical system, you have external force. In chemical system, you have chemical bonding. In a biological system, what is connecting all these different parts? What is connecting them? Your whole body is connected? Isn't it? Huh? No. There are also chemicals. But you cannot compare these three different kinds of disintegrations. There are different processes, uh -huh. microscopic and macroscopic. Yes. This disintegration of the planets is different than the disintegration of sodium chloride. They are mm -hmm. entirely different processes. So I'm telling about systems, chemical system, mechanical system, by definition itself. You go by definition itself. How you study chemical system, how you study mechanical system, and how you study biological system. I agree, but yes. you cannot compare the disintegration of sodium chloride with disintegration of the cell. It is impossible. Yes. Well, no, I am telling you, what is the difference? Why you cannot do that? That's what I ask, I'm asking. Because when... Uh, yes, sir. Why, why, why? I'm sorry, but I, I will tell you, yes. if you go to the uh, cell, yes. for example, if you go to the molecules, yes. then you again come to the sodium chloride. Yes. Then you can compare that. Yes. So you cannot compare the uh, disintegration of cell mm -hmm. with the disintegration of sodium chloride. Mm -hmm. Because sodium chloride is a molecule yes. and cell is a collection of millions of molecules. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, all those millions of molecules, they are working in an integrational manner. They are connected. Life. They are connected. What is connecting? My question is, what is connecting them? Yes. This is different it's life. You tell me, what is that? It's a life force. Life force. Life force. Any, other, any other technical term they use in biology? Technical term they use in biology. Huh? 
No. That's definitely correct in those things. No. They call it sentience. You heard about this term? Sentience. In biology, they introduced a term called sentience. In, if you see, if you search in biological textbooks, you will find they use the term called sentience. Cellular sentience, they call it in the cell, there is sentience. It's coming from the term called cognition. Sentience they use. And that, that is biological potency, they call it. Biological potency. Without that, the molecules will not exhibit all those functions. They will not exhibit. So that that itself, that sentience, what they call it in biology, it cannot be manufactured by mechanical manipulation or chemical, what you can say, uh, push-pull, you know, forces, what they call it. You cannot do so. You can do so much chemical reaction inside a dead cell, it cannot produce the sentience again. You can do in a robot very complex mechanical manipulation. Will, will it be ever experiencing pain, pleasure, all those things? You put a robot and a human being. 100 meter race. Robot is running, heaven is running. Robot got the victory. And it may say like this, like this. But will the robot be happy? Will the robot be happy? Who will be happy? Who will be happy? The person who designed that robot. He will say, oh, my robot win the race. He will say like that. But the robot is just raising artificially hand. But he has no experience of that happiness. So here, in the mechanical system, the purpose is outside the system. You decide the purpose, but for the human being or for a bacteria, you drop one, uh, what you can say, a dead particle in a fluid column. It will follow Brownian motion. But if you drop one bacteria, will it follow Brownian motion? It has its own purpose. You cannot define by any laws. So it is internal teleology according to Kant. And mechanical system is external to your body. This is the difference. The purpose is within, in biological system, but in mechanical system or chemical system, purpose is outside. A chemist will decide what mechanism it will follow. A mechanic will decide how I am going to connect these all links to produce something useful. This is the thing. Anyway, I was already telling you, uh, this reductionistic biology cannot answer two questions. What is the minimum number of parts that are essential for a living organism to survive? By what mechanism do these parts assemble together? They cannot answer these two simple questions. And I already discussed with some of your you know, faculty members that big scientists like you know, Newton, Harvey, Descartes, all these you know, philosophers and scientists, they were believing life can come from rotten meat. But later on, Francisco Reed, one in a scientist, he told, what is this nonsense? Why they are saying like this? How can from rotten meat some life can come? There must be something wrong in that. And he taken, you know, three jars. He taken three jars, you can see there. And he put rotten meat in three jars. And first one, he uh, sealed it airtight. And second one covered with the cloth. Third one, he kept it open. After some days, and the last one, he found insects on the meat. And second one, he found insects on the top of the screen. And the th uh, first one, he not found any insect. Why? Because the flies were getting smell and they're coming and lying egg on that meat. And from those eggs, those insects are coming. In the second one, there was some screen, so they could not enter. The lying eggs on the screen, from that insects are coming. And third one, they were not getting any smell, so no insect. From, this, from that experiment, he established that life comes from life. Life cannot come from non-life. Life comes from life. And later on, Louis Pasteur did famous experiment and swan neck flask experiment. And he told that life can only arise from life. This is a proven theory in biology. This is known as biogenesis. Right? You study that. Biogenesis. It is proved theory that life comes from life. To produce life, you have to go to life. But Darwin's and his followers, they told, okay, we accept this pasture. What he says, we accept it. For all life, life is coming from life, but first life came from non-life. <laughs> we accept this pasture, okay. He is a great scientist, what he did, we cannot deny his experiment. Life can only come from life, but first life came from non-life. Every day, sun is rising in east, and you say, oh, first sunrise was from the west. 
But how is it logical? Is it logical? Is it logical? Tell me. Every day I am seeing sun is rising in the east. But you say the first sun rises from, from the west, then you have to prove that. I don't have to prove. You are a mad fellow. You are saying that first sun rises was from the west. That is your duty to prove. A rational person will say life is always coming from life and that's why there is first life and religion call it God. Religion call that first life God. Iswara Paramakrishna Satchitananda Bikra Anadir Adir Govinda Sarvakarana Karana. And Hegel also, German philosopher, he told reality is by itself and for itself. The definition of God is that he is self-caused. He is self-caused, nobody caused. If somebody caused God, then he is God. This is the definition of God. So this is what religion is saying. It is very rational. And scientific evidence supports this idea. There is no single evidence which supports abiogenesis, which is a part of not biology, but abiology. It is not biology, it is abiology. It does not support. So uh, when Darwin proposed his idea, and there is a split in scientists. Some scientists, they supported Darwin, and some scientists, they defer Darwin. And those who were deferring Darwin, they are being suppressed. They are not given funding, they are not given any encouragement, still they continued their research. And due course of time, in the, what you can say, last few decades of, uh, you know, 20th century, they come up with very, very interesting, uh, you know, research findings. You know about primordial bombarding? Primordial bombardments? You know about that? It is a, one of the prominent subject in cosmology, in uh, what you can say, prominent journals like Nature, Science, they publish this type of you know, papers. They say, at certain period in our Earth's history, big objects were coming and they are colliding with our Earth. So when big objects come and collide with the Earth, what happens? What happens? Lot of heat energy is created. Isn't it? lot of heat is created. So, uh, Darwin and his follower told, the creation of life from matter, origin of life from matter, only happened once in entire history. Because they know it so impossible. Only happened once. Then they told, my dear sir, when this happened, then they said, this many millions of years back. Okay, then this evidence they found, after so many millions of years after that happened, there is this bombardment. And that bombardment will not allow any life to survive on the earth. Then they say, if at all Darwin's idea is correct, then such creation has to occur many, many times. And it is technically impossible. So that's why James Casting is a well-known scientist in this field. And he says, origin of life field is in ferment. And goodbye to warm little pond. You see, uh, you know, one of the papers that published in Nature, what it says, and you can read that, you know, when you look that paragraph. Sorry, Charles, your warm little pond was a beautiful image. It's been enshrined in innumerable textbooks as the scientific theory of origin of life. But to hear the planetary scientists talking these days, you were dead wrong. The warm little pond never existed. This is a published paper in, in science. It's a published paper. You can read my, in a paper, and you go to that paper, and you see all the statements are there in that. It's not my statements. Uh, you respect scientists then you have to follow all these things. What you are studying is outdated, outdated literature. But what you are finding in research findings is going to another domain, another level, which you are missing, actually. And in 2005, Science Magazine published a special issue. It was 125th birthday issue of Science Magazine. And they published a title called What Don't We Know? You just search in Google, What Don't We Know? And you will find the special issue of Science Magazine. And there they published 125 questions that science don't know. One of the questions is, how and where life on our Earth arose? They don't know. 80% of the questions related to life, what is dream, what is sleep, all these questions related to life. Why we need sleep? After all, they don't know. Why sleep is necessary? They don't know this question. They're asking. Do you know? Anybody know why we need sleep? You are studying biology, but why need we sleep? Why we need sleep after all? They don't know a biological explanation. If it is chemical, why they need to sleep? They are just chemicals. They keep on working, reacting. Why they have to sleep? 
So many such questions, you know. So, the chemical evolution theory or the material origin of life has to write these all steps. Prebiotic synthesis, primordial soup, polymerization, pre-RNA world, RNA world, DNA protein world and primitive cells. All these steps it must cross to explain material origin of life or life came from matter and there are problems in each of these theory. For example, Miller. Miller found, Stanley Miller famously, you know, they did some experiments to produce so-called building blocks of life, right? They, you know, did that experiment for some time and they produced few amino acids and few sugar and Miller is telling, oh, I found the secret of life. I will now produce life in the laboratory. He was saying like that. So now scientist says Miller was not knowing even thermodynamics. <laughs> because what he was doing, you know, what he was doing in the experiment, he was producing those biomolecules and putting in separate flask. He was using some, you know, electric spark and producing those molecules and collecting in separate flask. Because he knows, because Miller was very clever, he knows if he allow those biomolecules to again to go to that flask, then it will damage. That same electric flask which is producing it, it will damage. When Miller was not there, in the origin of life, who was collecting all those in you know, a molecules first of all. Do you understand? If some, you know, lightning is creating all these molecules, the same lightning will also destroy those molecules. And in fact, my Guru Maharaj was doing uh, postdoctoral studies and Miller came to give one talk. And he was, you know, asking everybody, oh, I did this great experiment, you know, and now I need a lot of fun, then I will produce life in the laboratory. You know, I, I, I produce building blocks now. As soon I am going to produce life. Then after his talk, my Guru Maharaj raised the hands. Professor Miller, I have a question for you. And what is your question? Then he says, then why you want to spend so much of money to produce all these biomolecules? I can supply you all the biomolecules. Can you produce life from that? Then he said, I don't know. <laughs> he says, then everybody start laughing. You want to spend so much of money to produce biomolecules. After producing those Maya molecules, how we produce life? Producing all those DNA, RNA. In fact, our present director says, in a living cell, all those Maya molecules are there. You puncture it and wait for millions of years. And in fact, I will show you some funny experiments they done on this and how they conclude about after you know conducting that experiment. Anyway, uh, this. Uh, all these you know, problems, you know, like left-handed and right-handed molecules in biology, you know, they are very you know, selective, either left-handed only or uh, right-handed only, these type of molecules. But in nature, you find there is a mixture and all those molecules are mixed together. How such a unique you know, set of molecules come together in biosystem? It's a big problem, uh, this you know, chemistry cannot explain. And reduced atmosphere that Miller used, uh, many of these papers, they all, you know, contradict. They say that uh, early earth was not a reduced environment, so Miller's experiment is impractical. And primordial soup theory, if you see, uh, in NPR, they, they published one paper, it says, is it the time, uh, is it the time to throw out the primordial soup theory? Can you see that? Here. Is it the time to throw out the primordial soup theory? This is the title of the paper. Is it the time to throw out the primordial soup theory? In 2010, this paper published. So now many scientists are publishing articles on this direction. And polymerization itself, you know, I'm not going into detail. It is, you know, against the entropy principle. It cannot address and pre-RNA world, because RNA world was facing so much of troubles. They come up with this pre-RNA world idea. It is all theoretical idea. It never received any chemi uh, this, uh, experimental you know, evidence. TNA, PNA, all those things. And in RNA world itself, we know big scientists, they work very hard. And like Crick, for example, what he says after his you know, studies, at present, the gap from the primordial soup to the first RNA system capable of natural selection looks formidably wide. And Orgel is a very well-known biologist. And after his experiments, what he concluded in his paper, the precise events giving rise to RNA world remain unclear. Investigators have proposed many hypotheses, but evidence in favor of each of them is fragmentary at best. The full details of how RNA world and life emerge may not be revealed in near future. And he says, may not be revealed in near future, because that is such, such an impossible task. And DNA protein world like a chicken, chicken and egg problem. 
DNA is needed for protein and protein is needed for DNA. Which came first? Chicken came first or egg came first? We don't know that. It follows a circular logic. You cannot say which, you know, you know, which is first and which is last. And also, I was telling metabolism first or replication first. We cannot say uh, there is a debate in published literature on this you know, topic. And I was talking about this photo. This is published in Nature. <coughs> David Deemer, he did experiment. He said, let me put an end to all this you know, discussion. Let me do an experiment. And he dig a hole and he put all the necessary chemicals in that hole and he waited for a long time to see whether living cell will come from those all chemicals. And after long time waiting, he says, no, life cannot come from chemicals and it's published in Nature. And it is very recent research, I think 2005. It you know published. So these type of works are going on. You go through literature, and uh, in a old biology was thinking it is just combination of physics and chemistry. But present biology we say it talks about cognitive biology. Cognitive biology is a prominent department in MIT and all top universities. They are introducing cognitive biology now. It's not just you know chemistry and you know physics. They are talking about cognitive biology now because you see a bird and a satellite. If you throw a satellite, you can calculate precisely where it will go after certain time. 5 seconds, 10 seconds, you can calculate, isn't it? But if you release a living bird, can you apply that law of mechanics to calculate where it will go? It will not, uh, we cannot uh, you know, calculate because bird has its own free will. And same thing, Newton's first law, the body remains in rest when there is no external force. And you can apply it to marble, but can you apply it to tortoise? And tortoise, its own will, when it wants to move. You cannot explain in terms of Newton's law of motion. It is not possible. Even the, you know, the development, embryological development, you see, the, the homogeneous liquid knows precisely when it has to develop an organ like eye, kidney and all those things, and which location. So space and time plays a vital role. That does not happen in chemistry. Chemistry don't think about space and time so much. It simply reacts. But in an embryological development, you have to think about space and time. And precisely uh, that in a zygotic development, it knows when to develop what, where, all those things. So, uh, what I want to conclude is that the bacterial system, what they studied, is small living entities. That paper I was telling, bacteria are small but not stupid, abstract itself says, Smallest cells are cognitive entities. Smallest cells are cognitive entities. You cannot talk about life without cognition. Wherever there is life, there is consciousness. And wherever there is consciousness, there is life. This is the, you know, what you can say, I want to make you a conclusion. This is the Bhagavad Gita's conclusion also. And this is the famous biologist, Ernest Meyer. You might be knowing about him. And he says it is little difficult to understand why the machine concept of organism could have such long-lasting popularity. After all, no machine has ever built itself, replicated itself, programmed itself, or been able to produce its own energy. The similarity between an organism and a machine is exceedingly superficial. He is a very famous evolutionary biologist. You can read about his papers. He is one of the respected biologists. And this is his statement. And I want to say the concept of soul or atma is very important that we must acknowledge uh, in our in a biological studies. It is not something unscientific. You see, our director was giving a talk in University of California. He asked the students, do you all think you are bodies? They said, yes, we are all bodies. He said, yes, we are all bodies. They are raising hands. Then you are also chapati. Then you are also dal. Then you are also sabji. You are also potato. Then he said, why? How we are potato? How we are dal? How we are sabji? And he said, how your body is constructed? How your bodies are constructed? Potato was in the field. And you bring that potato and you eat it. Then from that your body is constructed, isn't it? But you eat, from that your body is constructed. And something is also going out from your body. In the form of urine, stool, sweat, so many ways it is going out. So you are coming and going. Like this happening, it's a flux. Body is a flux. A river, if you caught a cross section, always changing, water is going, right? But still you say it is Ganges, river Ganges. Same thing your body, after every seven years, all the molecular constant of your body changes. Still you say 
10 years back, 15 years back, I was a boy. That concept of I is there within you. So in this lifetime itself, you are changing your body. Isn't it? After every seven years, you are changing body. Same way after death, you change your body. It is not so difficult to understand from biology point of view also. So this way he explained. So concept of Atma is very essential in biology if he wants to make it a complete science. So abiogenesis is an insult to the life force. So our conclusion is that life comes from life and matter comes from life. You see, matter also coming from life. Nail is growing, your hair is growing. So much of biomass is produced by living organisms. So uh, this is a one, one of the important book. Uh, you can all see in the internet, Subjective Evolution of Consciousness by our, you know, Founder Acharya, Sila Bhakti Raksha Siddhadev Goswami Maharaj. You can download this book, Subjective Evolution of Consciousness, and you can read it. Very interesting book to understand how evolution is occurring on the plane of consciousness. And our organization name is Chaitanya Saraswati Institute. And not only our organization worldwide, there are so many different organizations in prominent universities. They are working on this type of subject, on the harmony of science and religion, and they are organizing many interesting events. And you are welcome to participate with us, this type of inner studies. And this is the book I was talking about, James S. Sokero written, Evolution, a view from 21st century. I have this in PDF format. If anybody wants to take this book to read for themselves, they can have it. No problem, I have a, a e-copy. And you read it. It is a scientific evidence. They, he summarized all the scientific evidence in this book to talk about how Darwin's theory is not supported by the you know, evidence. And this is our center in Navadip Dham near Calcutta on the bank of Ganges. Uh, we are doing this type of studies. And if you find any time, you know, like summer vacation or any time, please uh, contact me on this address. You can, you know, do this type of course. Free of cost we are giving. We are not charging so many thousands of rupees. You can stay and take prasadam and study these subjects and help others, not only to yourself, help others on these topics. With this, I would like to conclude. If you have any questions and comments, you are welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, please. Ramani. Sir, how can you say that science leads to moral degradation? Huh? How can you say that the science leads to moral degradation? Because in my experience, the more I know the science, the more I become humble as a culture in How can you say that we go? Our moral is the science. Correct. This is a good question that everybody must know. You see, when I say to you, you made of chemicals, your friends are made of chemicals, then is it a respect that I'm giving to them? I say your parents, oh, they are just chemicals, kick them. <laughs> they are just chemicals, kick them. Is it the respect that you are going to give? Is it the moral? I don't respect chemicals. But I respect my parents. I respect even an ant. I respect even an ant, a spiritual you know, person. He respects even a small living entity. Even what to say, non-living entities. He respects. So here is the disrespect. When you say you are all made up of chemicals. Right? You agree with me or not? Do science teach? You respect rivers? Is there any subject which teaches? Oh, you respect everything came from sacred source. You have to respect. Is there any subject which teaches like that in science? Tell me, yes or no? Please answer. Is there any subject in science which teaches everything came from a sacred source? You must respect everything. Is there anything in the science which says? What science says that you use everything to gain some? Science says that everything is connected. So, uh, to survive ourselves, to make ourselves keep Yes, correct. Survive. We have to resolve everything. Yes, to survive, you can eat other, you know, your friend. No problem for that. Is this the proper philosophy? Is the proper philosophy? Huh? Survival is everything. You see, bacteria also cooperating. Why you are not talking about cooperation? Bacteria is cooperating, no? You know, in a colony, when they are not getting much food, no, one bacterium committing suicide. Your fellow, you know, friend, you know, national, you know, your, your brother, he is fighting for freedom for you in the border. Isn't it? He don't have any you know, self-interest to saying, okay, he don't know what is freedom. He may die, still he is fighting. Isn't it? But how can you put it in science? That type of, you know, yeah. of feelings. 
They are greed. Yes. What kind of greed? What kind of money they will get? When they die, what is the money is they use? They are fighting. Oh, I may die, but let me in a fight. You see, this is the principle they follow in fight. If they are greed, they will come out, come out from there. If they have some other thing, they will come out. But I will die. That type of thing they follow in fight. You know that? Have you seen any, any you know, real field in you know, a fight, how they fight? You just see how they fight. If they think about themselves and finished, war is finished. Both parties will run away here and there. Right? Yes, tell me. Can religion invent a river? Can, can religion create life? Can religion create a plane? Everything because science is to take us to the moon or going to take us to the Mars. So can religion do this? Does any religion, does any religion claims that it created a uh, river? No. It's creating, I will create in future life. Does any religion claim like that? No. But science claim that. They are not arrogant. They are saying everything comes from God. We respect it. We use it in its, in its purpose. But science claim in future, we will produce everything, no need of God. We are God. We will do everything. We will do everything. Yes, so, because so. we are trying. Huh? Because we are trying. Science is trying. Okay, you are trying, but you are not created even small cell. Yes, that is true. It doesn't mean that uh, we have to assume uh, anything. Why do you say God? So, what, you want to say that you want to remain a proud person? Even though you not created one single cell, and you said in future I will create uh, again Mahatma Gandhi. Uh, this is what your claim is. You not created even one cell. In future, in future I will say, in future I will give you one crore rupees. Now I will take your house. Is it a good idea? Post dated check. This is a good idea. Tell me, you will accept it? I want, I want to take your house. I will give after uh, maybe 100 years, 200 years, 1 crore rupees, 2 crore rupees, whatever I will give. Will you agree to that? If I get a good money, then... Okay, then, then, then I wish you good luck. <laughs> then I wish you good luck. No problem. <laughs> yes, sir, please. Sir, thank you so much for a very, very, very nice lecture. Yes. Very nice presentation, and I'm really very uh, happy, very honored to have be uh, one of the audience. I'm myself happy that yeah. I am some service to you. Uh, <laughs> I have a, uh, maybe I have some comments, maybe yes, not please, questions. Please. I agree with you uh, with all the things, uh, and I have, I don't want to say I have reservation or I know better than you. Uh, I think I don't know. I have confusion about some things. Yes. And uh, these confusions I want to put forward yes. as my comments. Yes. For example, uh, uh, just uh, now uh, with the discussion with uh, one of my, our, our colleagues, uh, you uh, asked, scientists are claiming that they can do everything. They can create life, they can create river, and so on. For example, I just want to make a test. Maybe you are right. So if there is somebody who can create river here, is any scientist can create river? Can it create a, a, a single cell? Is there anybody who claims that? Yes, I see No, no, no. I just want to make a statistics. <laughs> who of you can create one cell? You are all scientists, and tell me if raise your hand if somebody is able to create uh, a cell. Is there anyone? You see, sir, there is nobody. No sir, scientist claims sir, that. Yeah, I can create, but it depends on the what mental she provided to me. No, no, you just that, 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 because <laughs> yeah. to, to facilitate discussion. <laughs> discussion <laughs> that way. Your discussion has. I'm sorry. But I'm sorry. I am scientist. I am a life I am a claim. I am a claim. I am a claim. I am a claim. Nobody is claiming. But so, I, I say in scientific no, world, no. so many people. So this play. is also scientific I, community, I, sir. Sir. They are, they just for discussion. Began yet in the science. <laughs> Therefore, so thank you so much. Yes. There is nobody, in my opinion, yes. I am a science student, yes. and I don't claim that I can create a life. Yes. You are I don't a, claim you are honest that. Honest scientist. You are an honest scientist. Yeah. yeah. So I, I just want to talk about the scientist, honest scientist, not yes. about correct, the, correct. anybody. That's what we also want. So. You know, there is no scientist, in my opinion, who can create, who claims that, who can create. I tell you the name, you sir. Yeah. Uh, there is actually, you know, Craig Venter, you know? There is a Craig Venter Institute also. Yeah. So therefore... Yes, yes, Craig Venter, you know? All of you know? Craig Venter? 
Craig, yeah. Craig Metal. Yes. Who, who created that? Yes. Yeah. No, he Seth. claimed he claimed that but he created artists in life. But, but he, he, he is one of the creators of several billion people. He is one of the several people, billion people. We cannot count him as a one of the one and all. So my, my comment is therefore I request you, maybe my, my request, my comment is, you know, many scientists, not only scientists, mm -hmm. biologists, mm -hmm. uh, 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 mathematicians, yes. social scientists, yes. even those who claim that who are uh, spiritualists, mm -hmm. you know, many, many people are claiming that mm -hmm. they can do that, they can do that, they can transform everything and so on. Yes. So foolish people are everywhere, in every sector. Correct. So, and there are many people who think that science is confronting with spiritualism, with correct. gods, religion, and so on. There, there, are, there are also some people. Yes. So now, I think yes. we should not bring yes. religion or spiritualism and science in confrontation. In my opinion, they are science and religion, I don't, maybe religion is not, is not the correct term. In my opinion, dharma, okay? Maybe dharma and uh, science, they are all together, both are together, they are the two sides of the coin, and we should not bring them in confrontation because they are existing together. Even before the scientists started to think about evolution, there were people who thought that this is not the God. There, there were some people who, who thought that this is not the God uh, who, who created the world, and so on. You know, therefore, this discussion started several thousand years, years ago. I think, I don't know. Can I answer? So, so my, my, my comment is only that. Uh, we should not promote confrontation between science and Correct. spiritualism. Correct. This is my comment. Actually, our magazine name is Harmonizer, and we are trying to create a harmony between science and religion, not confrontation. Actually, if you see, when you say that we are not claiming that life is, I can produce life, and you teach students, what you teach is a biogenesis. Life comes from matter. This is what you teach in your syllabus. You see, you ask any biologist, they teach or not a biogenesis. So you, you please ask. Yes, yes, they teach. That is a biology course. It is, it is there in syllabus. They teach it. We are called both biogenesis and abiogenesis. Yes, biogenesis means after first life. Abiogenesis is first life. That's what they teach. This is there in their philosophy. When you say what you say and it is not matched with your textbooks, then there is some problem. That's what I'm saying. That's that you know uh, that scientist, the doctor Kuhn, he told the textbooks they misrepresent the reality. This is what he's saying. We need to change that. South Korea done that. They removed all those. You know. Uh, there are other reasons also in South yeah. Korea. Yes, tell sir. What is the reason? You know, there are also in, in, in the, all around the world. Yes. Many people have been using yes. religion, yes. not dharma, yes. religion as a kind of weapon. Weapon. You know, mm -hmm. they are misusing religion yes. to bring confrontation among the people. So they are also bringing the siblings of, uh, in the name of different kinds of religion to yes. different places. Correct. So they are, externally they are saying that they want to bring harmony, yes. Yes. but internally they have intention to bring disharmony yes. to the society. Yes. Yes. So I am not sure what, I, I have to learn about it, yes. what, what, what really happened in Korea, yes. but there are many countries in the world, yes. some countries in the world, they yes. can, they want yes. disturbances, yes. and they are trying to do it with the help of the religion. Yes. Let, let, me, the let, religion. Me, let me say something. <coughs> Excuse me, sir, can I, can I have some attention, please? Mm -hmm. So here, our sir asked a very interesting question, why such a thing happened in South Korea? He says, in religion, sometimes it is misutilized. Of course, in every in a religion or science, everywhere, there is some kind of fanatism. It is there. See, if you want to search for a ghee, you are searching for ghee, right? And then, pure ghee is not available in the market. That does not mean that pure ghee is not there. Just we have to search it. At the same time, just oh, pure ghee is not available, so I will deny the existence of ghee. That is not correct. So, what is the truth? What we are experiencing? From where I came, I came from living parents. From where they came, they came from living parents. Life is always coming from life. I have evidence in front of my eye. This is what empirical evidence and Louis Pasteur proved that scientifically. And this is an established truth. Then why I have to teach a biogenesis? What uh, empirical evidence, what basis we have to teach that? This is the first question. As an honest scientist, I ask this question. Scientist means he must accept the truth and spread the truth.
This is the purpose of true science. Scientist, scientific research is not dedicated to atheism. Do you think the purpose of science is to dedicate itself to atheism? The purpose of science is to dedicate itself to atheism? The purpose of science is to dedicate itself to the truth. It's to the truth. Whether it is atheism or theism, that it does not matter for science. So, what is truth? Let us you know, look into the truth. What is the truth that we are experiencing? So, we are going in many directions, but let us investigate what is the truth. That is the main point. We have to be honest. So honesty is lost. Some politics, some kind of you know, other motives. Then that is that type of what you can say, exploitation is there everywhere. That's what I am saying to you. So look for the truth. That's what our message is. <coughs> when, when you look for the truth, religion and science can develop harmony. But when you have dogmatically fixed something, then both will be having some conflict. Any other questions? You wanted to ask something? I have one question. Yes, yes. So, in your lecture, you said that the DNA cannot be synthesized outside cell, but we are synthesizing. The DNA cannot be synthesized. No, I not told that. So, you told in your lecture. I told DNA cannot replicate itself outside. It replicates outside. Yes. Outside the cell. Yes. Huh? Outside the cell, DNA can replicate. Can you give some we evidence? Have, we so, have to do many experiments always replicating where, the cell outside. Where, where, where we are doing that? Where we are doing that? Inside a living system or a what you can say mechanism you have to introduce. You put a DNA on the on the glass. In a test Yeah, glass. Automatically it will replicate, produce yeah. two DNA? Yeah, it will replicate. So he is so he telling about the PCR, polymer DNA. Yes. What I'm what I'm saying DNA by itself, see James Sepiro, he written in this book. DNA plus zero. DNA plus zero is zero. DNA plus zero is zero. DNA by itself cannot do anything. This is what biologists have said. If you say something, then we have to contribute with them. They are doing regularly this type of experiment. I am, I am not asking any question, but yes. I am saying that you have used that, that DNA cannot be replicated outside. I, 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 we can replicate DNA outside. Like the Only that. So you have a control environment for that. DNA by itself is not doing that. You are doing something, a plant experiment or something you are doing with that. Yeah, that is outside the cell. That's I am telling, DNA by itself is not doing, you are doing that. You understand? You are you are doing some plant experiment. <laughs> I am not doing that, DNA is doing that actually. But you put one DNA outside and let him do it, those right. things. Replication is done by DNA itself, but it is outside cell. So that is your business. You go and read. That's that's that's. That, that, that. You want to say that all this part? Do you think? Do you think that all these biologists they are wrong by saying that that DNA by itself cannot replicate? Then you have to publish papers to, dis to no, deny that. This is a democratic system. You can, pop you can give your opinion. That is another. No, no, it's okay. But you have to give one evidence for that. Yes. One. Yes. So all scientists keep some, are give some paper, without, without give some peer-reviewed paper. Your statement, how can I trust it? You have to give some record. The, the Muller experiment is also published paper. Miller, Miller experiment. It's also published paper. So but how, how DNA is producing uh, from so Miller's experiment? Are, you are going against the published paper also, no? no Miller is produced DNA? Against. Miller, pro Miller produced DNA? Miller produced DNA? Miller produced DNA, I'm asking you. Right. I'm not saying DNA, but... Then, then what? The experiment... Miller not produced DNA. Right. No, but one scientist don't have to produce everything. Miller nah, he is told DNA is produced by Miller. I am telling Miller. No, I, 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 I said that the experiment of Miller is also published paper. paper. Yes. Yes. And that you are also putting some published paper. Yes. So there are thousands, millions of published papers. Okay. Some papers are saying that you what you are saying. Yes. And many papers are saying that you are wrong. Then you quote one paper. Yes. Which paper you are telling that DNA is producing by itself or another DNA? That is being we experiment. Our lab are doing experiment. Why? Why should I say that? <laughs> yes. So if, if you if you go and read, no, I, I will read. But you send me that paper. Yeah. Please send me. My email is there. Please here. My email is there. Please send. Me. Please send this on email. I will be happy to reply to you if there is, you know, that. But your claim is correct. That is very easy. That is the DNA is science since 1990s. We are replicating DNA. Also. 
So uh, yes, now uh, I think uh, the discussion is uh, almost over. Yes. Uh, uh, one, more one more question. Can I have your attention, please? Yeah. Sir, there is some question is asked. Let us listen. Yes. How can you prove the existence of deities or gods just by criticizing? How? 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 How can you prove? The existence of God just by criticizing the theories of evolution. God, I already told you, life is always coming from life, so there is first life. But That's then, one. what will happen uh, to the concept of God if abiogenesis is proved experimentally? The present scientific knowledge may not be able to. If, if you prove it, then we will think what we can do, but now you not prove it. If I can say many things, if sun walks with us, you know, we talk with sun and, you know, we can control sun's movement, if you not die, so many things I can say, if. But after you prove, then we will do that. What do you think? First you prove it. They are trying for more than, you know, so many hundreds of years. Can religion explain the life better than science? Huh? Can religion explain Yes, the... yes. There is Sankhya philosophy. You studied about Sankhya philosophy? I am not a philosopher, I am a science student. Science student. I am telling you, your science cannot explain about mind, intelligence and ego. Can you explain your mind? Can I, can I see your mind? If I not see your mind, there is no mind. There is no mind. If I don't see your mind, there is no mind. If I not see your intelligence, there is no intelligence. Is this the way I can study? No. There is something like friendship, there is something like love, there is something like an affection, all these things we experience. For, for that, I think religion may not be needed to explain the friendship and all these things. Yes. These things happen in animals also. Animals, also. yes, but how you study that? Animals don't yeah. study those things. Animals don't study those things, but as a rational being, you try to understand those things. That's rational view, yeah. you can understand things. Yes. Religion may not be needed. Huh? But how you study? It's happening. Happening, but you, you are human and you have to study those. Animals don't study. I want to become happy. I want to know how do I become happy. I want to not die. And I want to know why I am dying. Even though I want to leave, but why I am dying? Because of bodily conception. So this is also studied in religion. It is not studied in science. It is not studied in science. Atma and then consciousness, God, all these subjects must be reintroduced in, in educational system. Otherwise, it's not a complete thing. That's what we are, that conference is about but science and scientists. Know, the ethics, the theology, these people also should study the science. Yes, yes, of course. Of course, I am a scientist. I am myself a scientist. I am studying all those things. I find there is no conflict. Origin by the fighter. You cannot, you know, create, oh, fighting is something else and religion is something else. Every field can be engaged in the service of the Lord. So, uh, uh, thank you. Yes. Okay. So, I think uh, uh, it is a very uh, thought-provoking uh, subject that uh, emerged in our uh, uh, the university compound. Because uh, uh, he not only taught only the physics or chemistry uh, or uh, simple uh, subjects of environment and something like that, but he touched all the subjects including with the Atma and uh, Paramatma. And based on these, all the information, he challenged many things also. And since we are struggling for the truth, because our science is uh, many uh, interest is just to find the truth. And to wait where we find the truth, no matter whether it is in the biology or the spirituality, we always struggle for it. That is what uh, our uh, uh, Bhakti, uh, Dr. Bhakti uh, Nishkam uh, uh, Santa, uh, have told us, and it is very, very thought-provoking. It really gives us a very good inspiration. It really gives us a very uh, enthusiasm to insert the uh, very consciousness hidden inside the biology, consciousness hidden in, into the every kind of uh, uh, matter, environment, or uh, rocks, every kind of things. So uh, I think uh, this kind of uh, seminar is uh, really beyond uh, my expectation, beyond many of our, our expectations. We got the very good knowledge from him, very much uh, inspiring. Or it doesn't mean that whatever he said should, should be accepted uh, directly. We can just take it and still wait uh, for, to throw it. So this is a very great time for us. This day is, of course, a very uh, uh, calm and quiet and very happy day. And uh, we are really happy to celebrate this uh, uh, seminar. And this kind of seminar will be held after some 
months or so in our uh, university again, and we will have a lot of discussions uh, uh, for two days. So uh, uh, it is very great thing because of your patience, uh, this uh, thing becomes so much uh, successful. At the same time, uh, I would like to request all of you to give your email address so that you can receive our magazine, e magazine. There, you can so, so lastly, uh, let us give a very good applause. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.